Good morning from an overcast, but still very beautiful day here in central Portugal. Today, I was a little late getting out of bed. I woke up with a headache, and I'm pretty wimpy, so I stayed in bed for a while. It's about 1 p.m., and I'm really eager to get started on the clay wall for the shower. So I'm going to see how far I get on this. I haven't started the work yet. This video will basically just keep going until I run out of time and have to edit. So let's see how far I can get. I'm going to start with the clay, and then I'm going to also hope to get the window in as well. So let's just see how we go, and I'll see you guys at the end of the video. So we'll start today by mixing up a batch of cob, which is a mix of clay, sand, water, and straw. Mixing cob is something I generally really enjoy if I'm using a cement mixer. Doing it by hand is kind of okay the first couple times, but it does get old pretty fast. It's kind of hard on your back because you're sort of uh, crouching over a wheelbarrow and just mixing a whole bunch of stuff up by hand. So yeah, it's not the funnest part of this whole experience, but it is nice to get muddy and have your hands in the material, so that's kind of cool. But as I continue on with working with clay, I'm definitely going to have to borrow or buy a cement mixer just to speed the process along. You can also do it by feet on a tarp. Maybe I'll try that one day, but for now, just kind of doing it in the wheelbarrow is fine. And I think today I probably only need three or four loads. So I'll see, I'll see what I can get done basically and keep doing it until I get fed up. So this mix is a little wet, but I'm about to add straw into it. And normally I would soak the straw, but when I'm working by hand, I find it's a lot easier to mix it quite wet and then use the dry straw to soak up some of the moisture. So that's my plan. So I'm going to just keep mixing this up and check back in at the end when the mix is finished and I'm ready to put it on the wall. So it started raining a little harder and so I'm going to take everything inside and get started on the wall. I have my mix ready and I'm really excited to start this section so let's just get to it. Okay the lighting in here is amazingly crappy but let me just show you first a couple of things that I did uh, off camera. First of all, I limed in this post basically so that it's more secure. Eventually I'll chop these off because the clay will sort of come in to the level of these little metal rings. You can see these little metal rings in a bunch of places. The reason I do that is so that it kind of grips on to the clay and or the lime at the edges and doesn't want to pull away as it shrinks. Eventually this will be clay and it'll kind of come into this level here. Um, but for now, we're working on this guy.
so I've done that much and I've got quite a bit left still so that's good but you're in my chair mister I'm about to take a break so you better clear off you have your own chair so I'm gonna want to leave maybe about a centimeter so that the plaster that goes on top of this, the finished plaster, has some space. I'm going to come back and refine this all, make it nice and flat with a tool. For now, I'm just putting the clay on the wall and let it dry a bit, and then I can flatten it all out after. So now that I've kind of cleared the shower tray made of concrete, I can switch to the other side and build that side up quite thick, and then come around to this side at the end and just finish it off with whatever sort of pokes through. That's the plan. Let's see how it goes. Hello. So the only difference over here is that I have this shower tray and it comes out quite far. So when I build the rest of the cob wall up, it's going to be a little thicker on this side than it was on the other side. And then it's going to get to a certain thickness and I'm going to put bars across the same way as I did this side. And that's what's going to hold the lime. So when I put the lime on eventually, it's going to be held by the bars, but also pressing up against the clay that's been built out. And then the lime needs to come so that it kind of overhangs this shower tray, which will eventually be tiled, but it has to overhang a bit so that no water wants to sit on any lips or anything like that. So it'll shed away, go down the drain, and be gone. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to keep building up from this side, and then once I get a bit higher, I'll go to the other side and smooth it all out. Okay, I'm going to make another mix, put it on the wall, and then check in again when I've got a bit more wall to show you, and then we can go from there. But you get the idea. Mix some cob, stick it on the slats, build up and keep building up, and eventually I'll have a wall. I've been working pretty hard putting clay onto the shower side of this operation, and now I'm going to switch back to the other side and basically just add the clay to meet up with the stuff I did on the inside. I will have done two and a half mixes and mixing it really does take it out of me. It's not the fun part of this job. Putting it on the wall, super fun. Mixing, not fun. So let's keep going, use this little half mix that I've got and then I'll call it a day. So this looks somewhat flat. 
I'd like to make this a bit more even, flatten the whole thing out. I'll use a trowel, possibly tomorrow. What I am curious about though, is what it looks like on the other side. So I'm wondering if all the pushing I did over here, pushed everything out on the other side. So let's take a look. Yeah, so there's been a bit of slumping, especially at the top here. So I'm just gonna push it all back into place. I've got a bit more mix left here and here. So I'm gonna use the mix that I have, just keep going with what I've been doing, finish this off and also get a start on the window. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. I'm up early. I'm very happily headache free and I'm going for a very short walk. So short, in fact, that I'm wearing my slippers. Probably shouldn't be, but I am. Good morning, little guy. How are you? Mikey is hanging out in the hellscape that is my garden. It's not pretty. Look away. Let's carry on on the walk. Are you coming? Are you coming walking with me? This way. This time of year is absolutely gorgeous and one of the major bonuses of February is oranges. So I'm down here to collect a few oranges so I can make a morning juice. I'm really into orange juice at the moment, so having two tiny but loaded trees is pretty awesome. Four oranges usually does me for a nice big glass of juice, so that's how I'm going to start my morning. Let's just have a little stop off on this terrace and check out the almond tree. So I've got some flowers popping up. The tree looks pretty happy. I just think these flowers are so beautiful. And last year the tree gave me two almonds. They were delicious and I'm hoping this year I get three. Maybe four. And then the apple tree is just sparking to life now. Ah, oh, it's a nice time of year. I'll do a whole tour of my land, including the terrifying garden, very soon. But for now, orange juice. I'm gonna save the oranges for lunch, I think. I'm gonna start the day with a coffee, some breakfast, and the snap. I've always wanted to do the snap, I never have. And now is the time. So let's go do the snap. Ta-da, I snapped, it's done. I don't know how well that effect worked. It was my first time. But I decided that I've already shown loads of clay action in this video. Nobody needs to see that much clay. So I've just skipped ahead to the finished product, which is basically clay on a flat panel. I want to also show you the other side. I've only gone up to, well, the top of the, the section because I'm not exactly sure yet what I'm gonna do up here. I'll probably have the line go up quite a bit higher, which means I might go underneath with clay or I might just do it straight with lime. I'm not sure. And on the side here, this is going to wrap around with lime and meet a clay wall that's going to be done in the same way with the wattles. Haven't done that yet. I'm focused on this part. This is super slumpy, so it needs to be pushed back into place, but I'm going to let it dry a little bit more first. And then up here, I wanted to point something out. I'm not sure how well you can see it. Yeah, you can see the crack there. That's what I was talking about with the shrinking of the clay. It's totally normal. And that's what I'm hoping to prevent with those little uh, metal rings. Obviously I couldn't just easily nail the metal rings into that concrete uh, rafter, so I didn't. I've also got some cracking over here. I'm not massively concerned about it. Um, it's more annoying when it's actually the final render that cracks, but I think this is nice and strong and it's fine. The cracking could be because of not enough sand or not enough straw, but it's only one spot and that's okay. For these cracks up here, I'll come back and finish those off with some more render. I'll just stick it in there and keep doing it until it seals up. And then over here, I've also finished claying the top. Well, not finished. I went as far as I could with the mix that I have. I didn't want to do another wheelbarrow of mix, but I'm really happy that I was able to basically encase the entire section above where the lime is going to go. So that's pretty good. 
I'm really happy with this morning's work. I've got a lot of stuff still to do. Right now, I'm gonna tackle this window. I've been doing a little bit of work on the frame and I'm excited to get it in place, but I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna do it yet. So I'm going to contemplate over a glass of orange juice. I've gone snapping mad, folks, but I think I've gotten it out of my system. I don't know if it actually worked. Might have looked like crap, who knows? But I'm gonna enjoy my orange juice and contemplate what to do about this guy, working as a frame for this guy. So I've got a little bit of carpentry in my future, and I think I'm gonna bring out a tool that I've never used before, the router. I'm a little scared of it. I don't really know what its purpose is but I'm hoping it can solve a problem for me. So I'm gonna enjoy my juice and then get some tools out and move to the carpentry phase. That's good. Any guesses about what's in this super cute little box? Something I have no idea how to use. They are router bits. So I bought this tool probably a couple of years ago when I actually had a budget for tools, and I have never opened the box. I've opened this box because it's super cute. It's got all these little bits in it. I think they're adorable. However, the tool itself, I really don't know what to use it for. I can't remember why I bought it. Maybe because I thought I would be making windows. Maybe because I often see people with a router table and it just looks super useful. I truly have no idea. But now I'm wondering if perhaps I can use the router to trim off the inside of this thing so that this thing isn't quite as tight a fit. Yeah, so I don't know, maybe something like that. Each router bit has a sort of diagram for what it does. So I'm going to be, or maybe this one. I'm going to be putting the router onto the router machine, putting the router bit onto the router. I don't exactly remember how it works. Actually, I have no idea how it works because I've never used it, but maybe it goes like that, spins around, and it'll kind of trim it off, I don't know, straight, and then do the same on the other side. This is my plan. No idea if it'll work or not. But I am very excited to open this up. It's just been sitting on a shelf for a really long time. Sad and neglected. I think, I think this is gonna take some instruction manual reading. It's nice and heavy, feels sturdy. It's one of the brushless uh, modeled tools, which is what I usually try to buy if I can. And yeah, some unknown parts. Some impenetrable cardboard. And some thing. So, to the manual. I should have saved my orange juice for this phase. I've got some reading to do. So I've got no reading to do. It turns out it's a collection of complicated looking diagrams. So, Let's see if I can work this out. Probably doesn't help that I've never used a router before and have no real idea what it's for. Hmm. Most of the 84 diagrams are quite confusing looking, so I'm holding out hope for the text, which also looks confusing. I'm gonna figure this out. If it's the last thing I do, uh, which at this rate, it might be. 
So I've decided that figuring out the router is gonna be a job for another day. I've got a whole bunch of other things to do. And most importantly, I really wanna get that frame in the window today. So I'm gonna go analog, I'm gonna go old school and try to get it done with my draw knife and a clamp. Will it work? Who knows? Maybe I'll be revisiting the router very soon, but I don't think I have the mental energy to do that today. Um, I'll, I'll come back a different day and hopefully figure it out and hopefully it's not another two years from now. So I really have no idea if this is gonna work. There's a decent chance that everything could break. Who knows? But I'm gonna try and see what happens. So this seems quite ridiculous. My uh, draw knife is not sharp at all. I don't really know how to sharpen it. Sharpening stuff is not my forte. But I only have to shave off a little bit and I think this will do the trick. <laughs> or maybe not. So it probably makes a lot more sense to mark the spots that are a little too tight rather than using this ridiculous method the whole way around. So let's see if I have any clues here. There. There. Okay, resume ridiculousness. You know what? Forget that. It's ridiculous. Sometimes my nemesis tool is just the right tool for the job. It's better but it's still getting hung up somewhere. Where? Why? I'm just gonna whiz around the whole thing with the jigsaw and hope I don't completely destroy it. I've whizzed around the interior of this with my nemesis. It was okay, it's still annoying. Um, and so let's see if it fits any better. Yeah, that's what I want. I wanna be able to take it in and out without any hassle at all. So I'm happy with that. It comes out very easily, and I just think it's gonna save me hassle later on. I do like to plan ahead, I like to plan for the worst, and I can see a future where maybe one of these knobby things breaks, or the glass breaks, or who knows what happens, but having this fused inside of this would be really annoying. So I'm happy with this. Now let's figure out a way to stick it into the wall. It's about 5 p.m. It's a beautiful evening. I'm super muddy. I feel really happy, but I'm very tired. If you don't think I'm tired, let me show you exhibit A. I've made a very strange porcupine window creature to go in the wall. The idea being that all of the porcupines, the screws, uh, they stick into the space in the wall and then I fill that space with lime it grips onto the screws, holds the whole thing in place. I found a scrap of burlap, I've stapled that on the front because in my experience, uh, burlap helps lime adhere to wood. So that's what this creation is all about. Uh, it's strange. I got a little crazy at the end. I went a little bit nuts with the screws, but I have a feeling it's gonna work. I'm not gonna put it in tonight because I'm super tired and I have one more thing I wanna show you. So let's go finish that panel of clay with the trowel, make it as flat as I possibly can, and then I'm gonna call the night. 
I'm going to call it a night. And then I'm going to call it a night. And then I'm going to call it a night. Call it a night. Can't even speak anymore. Okay, the fire is on. I am definitely putting a baked potato in there later. I've got my tools of the trade and it's dark and gloomy, but I've got the light. So let's flatten this guy as much as I can. Gentle mist. Oops, that was not a gentle mist. Maybe it was that. That's better. I'm gonna attempt to flatten it out as much as I possibly can. This will just make it easier to plaster later on. Don't really know the best way to do this. I think it's okay for now. I could probably make up some little blobs of clay and whack them in these parts that are kind of uh, more divots, but I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. I think it looks cool. So that is a waddle and daub clay panel pre-finished plaster. I don't know if I'm supposed to do two coats of finished plaster or just one. I'll research that later. As it is right now, it's fine. So goodbye from today. I'll see you first thing tomorrow morning and we're going to stick that weird porcupine window type thing into place. Good morning. I'm ready to get started, but first I have to clear out all of these little bits and as much of the dust as I can get out. It'll just be easier doing it now before I actually put the frame in. So I'll start my morning with that and then I'll get some lime and try to get this thing into place in preparation for the window. It's a bit windy out there, so I'm going to do the doorway chat. I've cleared the dust and small stones out of the hole, and I think I'm ready to lime this thing into place. So let's go investigate the lime. I have a feeling it's going to be super crusty, so I'm going to bring out the big guns. I love this tool. It's my paddle drill. I use it all the time. It's great for mixing lime putty. And I'm just going to give this bucket of putty a whiz and hopefully it won't be too wet to use it for what I need it for. So, let's mix. Probably just on the cusp of being a little bit too dry, but I need it to be fairly stiff uh, for what I'm doing. So hopefully it's fine, and if it's not, I can just add water to it in the tray. So I've got a mark up at the top that lines up there, and then at the bottom there's another one somewhere. Um, I've had to take out a few of the screws, so it'll sit in. I might have to take out a few more actually, but uh, there we go. And now my plan is basically just to try to see where I need to put lime. So it'll be easier for me to pack lime in here behind it first, and then um, push it into the lime and finish it off afterwards. So. Probably have to take that screw out 
and try again. So I wanted to go over some of my decisions about this window. A few people have suggested that I put bottle bricks in here so that you have bottles kind of going through. You get the light, but you don't get the air. One of the most important parts about this window is that it opens to let steam out. So that's my thinking behind the porthole. I could have tried to make a window, but I decided just to buy something that uh, opens, it's sealed properly, and I can just put it in. So that's the thinking behind that. Uh, I will use bottle bricks somewhere else. I'll use them in many places, actually. I really love them. I love how they look. I'll probably end up using some here and some over there as well on the other wall panel. So they will get used, just not here. Another thing I wanted to explain is the reason for this frame. Partly it's so I can remove the window easily. Another reason is that the thickness of this frame thing, it's gonna sit in here, but it's not gonna be recessed the whole way in. And that's because the lime is actually gonna be built out quite a bit as well. So I could have tried to screw the window into the stones, but using concrete plugs and things means that you have to kind of really be exact about where the the uh, screws go in. It's just really tricky and difficult, and I've never had much luck with using plugs. I don't like them, um, and I didn't want to use them. So having a piece of wood that's easy to screw into is much better, but more importantly, it's going to bring the window out a little farther to match up with the thickness of the lime. I'll have a thin layer of lime over top of it, and then I don't really have a full plan yet. I'll probably do some kind of artistic feature around the window. Um, and then the lime of the shower will come out quite far and meet the window. And you can even see the thickness of the clay. It's already out quite a bit. So trying to screw the window into these rocks here, it would have meant really, really long screws just to reach through the clay and the lime to get into the rock. So having the wood makes that way easier. So that's the reason. That's the method to the madness. That's why I have a crazy porcupine window frame. It's time to put it in place, cover it up with lime, and nobody ever needs to know what weirdness is lurking beneath the wall. Put a bit more lime here, a little bit there, and then I'll try to get this thing in place. Okay, I think that's okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so there's definitely no right way to be doing this because this isn't a thing. So let's see. Uh, I kind of want to bash it into this part, but I also want to make sure that it's more or less level, just to complicate everything. Okay, it's good. I have a lot of work to do to actually line this in place. Well, a little bit of work anyway. But I'm really happy with this. Uh, oh no, I have a screw going through there. That's really annoying. <laughs> oh, bollocks. Um, what will I do about that? Oh no. Oh, crap. I have to take it out because I have a a screw poking through, and I can't really think of any way to get that out. Damn it. Okay. Oh, well, it's not really in that tight anyway, so. Or is it? Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, round two. Where were you? I'm happy with that, 
and now I'll lime it in. Sweet. One thing I've just noticed is that little lip of <laughs> stone here. Um, is so also it seems like it's a little squinty that way. So I'm going to try to tap it this way a little bit. Please don't fall out. Please don't fall out. Stay. Stay where you are. I think that'll do. Okay, back to liming. I'm really happy with how this has worked. I really wasn't expecting it to go so smoothly, so I'm waiting for the uh, thing that I forgot or something like that, but it looks good. And I'm gonna basically finish off the inside part um, underneath here. It's gonna be quite tricky. So I'll do that. I'm gonna let it dry a little bit before I start messing around with the inside part. And so I'll check in again a little later today when this is a bit more dry and we'll try to stick the window in. But now, I just realized I haven't had breakfast yet, so I'm gonna go meet some friends at the cafe, have a coffee, chill out for a few hours, and then come back and finish this off. I'm happy with this. I feel recharged, coffee has been consumed, treats have been eaten, and now I'm gonna go finish off this window. Okay, it's the moment of truth. Time to put the window in the frame. Let's see how it goes. I'm really happy with this. I actually couldn't be happier. I'm amazed that this has actually worked, if I'm honest with you. I'm also really happy with the clay panel below. This has been about two and a half days of really hard work and I think it's paid off. I can't really do much more on this until it has a chance to dry. Same with this. I don't want to mess around too much with wet plasters. So I'll probably move on to some plumbing stuff, although I'm not exactly sure how far I can go without consulting a professional. I might switch things up, I might start work on the door, or I might spend some time outside. I've been trapped inside in this dark corner for weeks and it's been beautiful outside. So I might give my garden some love and attention after neglecting it for approximately six to eight months. Who knows what the next video holds. I hope it's a good one. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them. I love hearing from people. There's almost always some reason that I'm doing whatever crazy thing it is that I'm doing. So if you see something that you're curious about, ask me in the comments and possibly I'll have an answer for you or possibly I'll learn a new thing because I did it completely wrong. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed the work and I'll see you guys in the next one.